Hey guys, it's Luke here, and this is another edition of Luke Lear Fusion. So today's kit is the Kobe B25B Mitchell. Now this one is ruptured duck, meant to look like one of the planes that took part in the Doolittle raid. Now for those of you that don't know what that is, it's when Jimmy Doolittle took his men and 16 B25s and flew them off of the aircraft carrier, the USS Hornet, went, bombed Tokyo, and didn't quite make it to their airfields in China. Now that said, let's take a closer look at this awesome kit. Taking a closer look at our B-25B, you'll immediately notice that this plane is very accurate. Now, it definitely has its flaws, but overall it looks really good, and I should know, I am part-time crew on an actual B-25J Mitchell, and they are definitely similar aircraft, however they are a little bit different, and this one isn't quite perfect, but it's pretty good. Now, on the nose, you'll notice that we do have our one machine gun, and the glass nose. Now in real life, the bombardier goes in there and that's where he has the bomb sight to obviously aim the bombs. And you can, in real life, there's a little person goes in there. But in the kit, you can only put a little head in there to represent the person. It's pretty solid and in the future, I plan on hollowing it out to make it just an actual, more realistic B-25. That is one of the things that isn't that realistic. Now obviously the next thing is that it is made with Kobe bricks so it's not perfectly shaped but it's gonna be pretty close. And one of those kind of imperfect shapes is the kind of the nose shape here. It just kind of goes down and then like levels out and then goes down a little more. The real plane is much smoother and looks better in my opinion. And another kind of imperfect thing is that the whole fuselage is a lot more round as opposed to the real B-25 being a little more square and this makes it look much more like a B-26 which would be really cool to see Kobe make a B-26, it's one of my favorite planes. And moving back to the front of the plane, sorry I went on a little tangent there, you can see the cockpit, you can just lift it up, it just comes off like that and inside you have two pilot seats for the pilot and co-pilot and you also have two little steering wheels in there which is nice to get a control mechanism or it doesn't actually control anything but a suggestion of a control mechanism although the actual B-25 had yokes not steering wheels so that is again a little tiny thing and right up here you have the observation bubble as well as two little windows right next to it well, one on each side, and both of the sides are identical, so I'm really only going to show one. And back here, we have our little star here, keeping it period accurate with the little red dot before they had the stars and bars. And we also have our turret further back. Now, the B-25, I'm more familiar with the B-25J, has the turret in the front. However, the B model does, in fact, have it in the back. And I really like that they put it back there and called it the B and kept it accurate rather than messing up the names. I really like that Kobe gets their stuff right most of the time. Now, right back here underneath the star, you have this little thing here. And in real life, actually, the B-25 is somewhat known for kind of tipping back if there's too much weight back there. So they've kind of given a nod to it. And on our B-25, we have a little pole that we stick back there. But the Kobe B-25 also has a little pole that you can flip down and then it doesn't completely fall back, but it just kind of falls back on that pole and keeps it pretty upright. I really like that they included that and it's a nice nod to the actual B-25s. Moving on to the back of the plane, you'll immediately notice the two tails that is very iconic to the B-25. Now again, Kobe has come in clutch with these awesome custom molded tail pieces. They always do this for their planes and I love that they do that even though it's just one set, they custom mold a piece just for it. Now, you'll also notice that we have a tail gunner's position. Now, the B-25B did not have a gunner position in the tail, especially the earlier ones. And there's that feature coming in handy, the little pull. 
And <laughs> back to the tail section, we have the little like glass part, but there shouldn't be guns there. Now, in the Doolittle raid, some of the planes did put painted black broomsticks through the back of the plane so that it looked like they had tail gunner positions to try to keep enemy fighters off of the back of the plane and just try to make it look like they have it. Although, that might be why they have these little black pieces, but I personally think it's because it's just a little bit inaccurate and that's okay. Now, you can easily take off these little gun pieces just by just removing them and that one came apart, but then you can just put back this little glass piece and it is now accurate. If I could actually find the studs. There we go, finally. All right, so moving back to the other side, mostly gonna be talking about the wings because I didn't talk about the wing on the other side. You'll again see that the side is pretty identical. The only thing different is the rupture duck nose art on the other side that we will take a look at in a bit. And on the wings, we have the little stars as well as our engine pods. Now, one thing that's a little weird about the wing itself is the wing is actually straight. Now, for those of you that don't know, the early B-25 prototypes did have a straight wing, but they found it to be very unstable, and they ended up changing it to a goal wing design, so it came kind of up and then out. Not as exaggerated as the inverted goal wing design of the Corsair, but kind of a similar idea. Now, that said, this is, again, a just a little imperfection that only the <laughs> enthusiasts would know and the engine pods themselves look very nice and we do have the pointed back end right here just like the actual B25. Now flipping the plane upside down the little pole right here can just flip up and down with the goal with the landing gear and you can speaking of the landing gear you can just kind of take them back and they all just kind of fit into their little holes. They all kind of stick out a little bit, but I think that's okay because this is a toy, not a full-on display model. However, the real B-25 has those landing gear completely hidden in the plane, and it looks much cleaner in real life. Now, the Bombay, which of course is crucial to have in a toy of a bomber, does have two bombs, and the real B-25 can hold much more than two bombs, and it's a little odd that they didn't make like smaller bombs to just put in there and have more bombs. However, I think it's okay, again, because it's just a toy and you can just put those back together to make the plane look complete. And now we can fly on to the overview. Yeah. Overall, this is a really cool kit, especially to me because I have a lot of personal attachment to the B-25 in real life. And just the whole plane looks really, really good. It's got a great sturdy build. It's pretty accurate and the only thing I would complain about is some of the little parts. Now that's talking about the landing gear and the little tail guns. You just saw me taking off those tail guns and one of them actually just broke. So that said, another thing that broke are these little landing gear pieces at the back and actually the one on the front snapped clean in half and these pieces you see now are actually off of the Kobe Wellington that was in last week's video. Now, that said, some of those parts might break. That could be a problem for younger children that could potentially choke on them. And I would think, or I would say rather, that this is a kit for maybe older kids that can play with their toys a little kind of softer. And this plane really falls in a little slot between display and play where it has some play features, but it also is trying to look really good for a display and I'm mostly gonna be using it for display, so that's pretty good. And that said, be sure to like, subscribe, click that bell so you never miss a video, and check us out on Instagram, at Nuclear Fusion, and I'll see you next time on Nuclear Fusion.